Thank you, Leela. Thank you, Pranoti. Um, just to, uh, by way of a little more introduction, I am in the uh, environmental business where we deal with uh, contaminated sites. Uh, the investigation and remediation thereof. I've uh, been at it for about 30 years or so. And I'm going to try to give you some perspectives on the differences in, in writing uh, and what we see are, are things that are important. Start right out with the importance of, the, of quality writing in the environmental industry. You can do the highest quality work out there. Uh, if you can't convey the results and the findings appropriately, you've almost wasted your client's money. Um, sometimes small, simple errors like spelling errors or use of wrong words can really detract from the overall impression of the work, um, even if it's technically completely correct. This is the one I love that in consulting, besides getting the invoice, which can sometimes be uh, tens of thousands of even to hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, our reports are really the only tangible product that our customers get. And, uh, you know, those need to be of the highest quality uh, to represent the quality of the work. Um, you really don't want either your client or a regulator to have to be searching for the answers uh, to their questions as they read your report. They need to be concise, clear, and, and tell the proper story and get the information conveyed. Um, I just want to throw a couple of quick anecdotes here of why these things can be so important and some of the nitpicky stuff can really come back to haunt you. One of my colleagues was actually disciplined by the regulatory uh, professional agency. Basically, he left out the, the, the words in general. During the, in the procedural discussion of what they were doing, uh, instead of saying, in general, the following procedures were used, they just put in the following procedures were used. So procedure A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Well, because of field conditions, things that were encountered in the field, um, in many instances, A, B, C, D, E were not followed to the letter. Um, and even though they were discussed later on in the report as variances to the procedure, the initial section still said they were followed, and he was uh, he was actually disciplined for that uh, on his professional license. My company years ago also actually we were sued because someone left out that the words uh, reported by or reported by Mr. So and So. The issue was in a uh, simple phase one environmental site assessment. The report read that the site was connected to the sanitary sewer. It should have said. Mr. So-and-so reported that the site was connected to the sanitary sewer. We had no other way of, uh, of local backup on that. Uh, the person bought the property, realized that it was actually on a septic system instead of the sewer, and tried to uh, get our insurance company to pay for him to, uh, to hook up to the sewer. I won't tell you how that came out. But anyway, um, just some of the small things that can really come back and, and be problematic for you. So we start uh, evaluating the writing that our uh, candidates do right in the hiring process. This little list here is uh, what you would be submitting to HRP if you were applying for a job here. You notice three different things. You got a cover letter and a resume and a, and a writing example. Cover letter is, is your chance to tell your story, why you're a good fit for the company. Um, whenever you're applying for a job, Show that you know what it is that they do at that at the company you're applying to. You know, do a little research on the company before you apply. It's not just a job. You're you're looking for a career for you know many years to come. Similarly, in your resume, you know, don't just list the topics. You know, the the rote resume. Use it to tell your story. Why you why you have skills. Why you have interests, and uh, and how you would work those in. Um, and definitely emphasize work experiences, even if they're volunteer experiences, um, dealing with people, dealing with crowds, field and lab skills that you may have acquired uh, either in school or in internships. Um, you know, point those out because those are the, the things we're looking for. We get a lot of highly, highly qualified candidates that apply excellent grades, but have never been out in the field or really done anything from that perspective. Um, but the main thing we're looking for um, when, we're, when we're going through this process is a writing example. We want it to be able to demonstrate your ability to communicate technical information. 
um, we had toyed with the idea and actually implemented it for a while of actually having the candidate write a couple of pages in longhand uh, during their interview on a topic of their choice that they felt very comfortable with. We, uh, we did feedback on that and it turned out uh, most of the candidates felt very intimidated by that. So we've gone back to uh, asking them to bring in something that they think demonstrates their, their writing abilities. Um, for new employee hires, we have a number of things that uh, kind of ease them into the process. Um, some of the work you're doing uh, at a fairly early stage in your career is uh, fairly straightforward. For different types of reports, we, we provide an annotated template. I'll show you an example of, that in a, uh, of one of those in a second. And basically, there's sections that need to be filled in, but the whole preparatory portion of that is there. Or there's a series of choices, depending on how, you know what um, your project fits into. Um, we we give ex examples and we call go-bys. Here's, here's what other people have done, trying not to force people to reinvent the wheel, giving them a sense of the, the depth and breadth of, of what they should be uh, putting into the projects and into the reports. Um, you know, we can borrow some text and ideas from existing documents. We wrote them. It's not plagiarism. People, you can model your text after other documents. You know, not, not a true borrow, but uh, you see the way other people have written it. Um, but definitely, you know, we're trying to avoid cut and paste and want to talk about common errors and whatnot. You know, that's, that's first and foremost is cut and paste errors. Early on in your career, you're going to be doing a lot of the same kind of projects. You know, you do a lot of phase one and phase two type environmental site assessments. Um, and you're going to be writing those reports up and you're going to repeat those um, until you have the competence. Um, and confidence that what you're doing, you can demonstrate that and you'll be given progressively uh, more complex projects, both the number that you'll be handing at any given time and the individual complexity of, of each one. And you never have to worry because uh, we have multiple levels of review. Again, another, another slide. But uh, going back on, on levels of review, uh, I was talking uh, in preparation for this, this webinar with uh, uh, our future CEO, and he said, he says, you know, I remember the first report I wrote when I got to HRP, and I sat down in the office with Mr. So-and-so, I won't give his name, and I looked down, and he had corrected my report, which was on paper, in red ink, and he looked at me and said, you know, Bob, it looked like the page was bleeding. We do that, we're uh, kind of brutal at times in the, uh, in the review process, but there are reasons for that. Um, this is kind of a, just a quick example of uh, a template. Um, this is out of uh, our standard uh, HRP Phase One Environmental Site Assessment Report section regarding previous environmental investigations. So if there aren't any, none are made available, none are turned up by uh, file reviews and whatnot, there's a, there's a statement right there. None were found, boom, all done. Uh, or if, if there were some found, then you know, you've got an introductory paragraph reference to the proper appendix. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and then you put the summary of, of what you found following that. Um, early on in, in the, uh, the career in environmental professional, you're going to do a lot of field work. You got to know how we collect the data, what, what the processes and operations are out there. Um, and taking of notes and filling out of the field forms um, is crucial because that's the information sometimes that, that can make or break a project, um, not necessarily the lab data when it comes back. So you want to be in your field note taking complete, concise, record everything. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to write down everything that happens chronologically through the day, any observations, people, the vehicles that go in and out of the project, just to keep track of things. You never know when that material will come in handy. You gotta make it a habit to always have a field book with you even when you're not expecting to take notes. Can't stress this next one enough. You have got to figure out how to write legibly. I've pulled up field notes and I have no idea what they're trying to say. I don't know if that's a five or an S. Um, so you know, we've got to be able to, to communicate that. 
it's a good idea, you know, even when you're doing this to review your notes yourself during the day, make sure that you can still uh, understand what it is you wrote down. And if not, rewrite them. Can't say enough about, uh, you know, taking proper field sketches, drawing things out to, you know, not necessarily to perfect scale, but, uh, you know, making sure you have accurate representations. And we've always made this point. This is act like your notes are going to be presented as evidence in court because they very might well be someday. And uh, I've had my field books uh, held up to me and uh, questioned during depositions. Um, and luckily, I've been a pretty good note taker over the years and things have worked out pretty well. A um, couple of quick examples of something out of a field notebook and a, a form that we use for filling in. Um, this, the field notebook, uh, in fact, like both these people have rather poor handwriting. Both of them work directly for me, but I've managed to get them to the point where you can read what it is they were saying. Uh, the field notebook, the, the great thing about this one was this site went dormant for the better part of 15 years. Um, and it came back to us and the regulators, you know, really wanted to know why we thought we knew what we knew. And I pulled out the field book and I had a, basically a, uh, to scale drawing of the stain, where it was, what the you know the, the dimensions, the shape. Um, they were so impressed with that they they said, "Yep, you know what you're doing," and and we got uh, through that really well. I'm showing this monitor well field sampling sheet. So this is uh, sampling one monitoring well. This was I think just last week. Reasonably good field notes for what they were doing. Sadly, we are not yet in our industry, for the most part anyway, uh, into the virtual realm. Um, we're getting there and uh, these things will luckily go away and this will be a fillable form on your phone or on your, uh, your field iPad. One thing I don't have on here and uh, you really need to, to use those uh, iPhones um, for taking pictures to document things. Um, it's just a, a great idea. Um, you get your time and your date stamp, you get your coordinate stamp, but in your field book, make sure you make, make notes of the pictures you took, which way you were looking, where you were on the site and what it is illustrating. Cause when you pull them up a couple of months later and look at them, you may not understand what it was you took a picture of in the first place. So. So let's get into the report writing process um, and a couple things I'd like to point out on that for the environmental consulting business. Um, you're going to be working on multiple projects and each one's going to have its own time demands and schedules um, and you, you'll need to uh, really work at uh, time management skills. Uh, the speed of projects is very different. Um, a lot of them are going to be super quick turnarounds, three or four weeks from soup to nuts, from the time we get the authorization from the client to the final product goes out the door. So as you can see, you know, the, you don't have a whole lot of time to go back and, and do multiple reiterations of these things. You may also be asked to do a summary of, uh, of uh, these, here is a stack of uh, 200 reports uh, for a project we've been working on for 20 years with different authors for different reasons. And uh, give us a summary of that next week, will you? So, Again, for the to be able to get these work products out the door in a timely fashion, um, you may have to write parts of the report without the other parts and make sure you go back and, and make sure everything lines up again. Um, we may end up with multiple authors. You know, you write this section, he'll write that section, she'll write that section. We'll get it all together. Um, but you have to remember that the primary author has the responsibility for making sure that everybody's using the same this, you know, the same terminology and the same abbreviations and the same kind of phraseology. So it ends up flowing uh, as a finished product. Again, the review process can be, uh, <laughs> it can be pretty painful uh, at, in the early stages, but it's, it's mostly just to reiterate how important some of these things are. You're going to see the potential for multiple, multiple levels of review before a work product gets completed. Um, it starts out with just, you know, bouncing things off your fellow workers. Hey, what did you do here? Could you read this for me? Does this make sense? Am I getting the right uh, uh, thought process out here? The main uh, gatekeeper is going to be the project manager. 
um, who's most likely going to be a direct supervisor. So is the one that's responsible for your bonus and raises. You got to keep them happy and you got to protect them. Um, he is often, he or she is often the signatory environmental professional. And that means they could be putting their, um, their license, their registration, their livelihood on the line when they certify something to a regulatory agency on this. So you got to watch out for them and, uh, they need to make sure, and if they seem nitpicky, it's in part because of that. Um, in cases where we have uh, larger long-term clients, um, there may be a client manager. Um, I have a number of those myself. Um, I have one client who will not let us use the word contaminated. No, sir. We have to ch change that to impacted. So there's no oil, oily contaminated soil on the site. There's oil, oily impacted. It says the same thing. The numbers are all the same thing, but it's just, you know, one of their pet peeves. It doesn't get in there. Um, we still have a relic word processing department, and we don't let a final document go out the door unless it's an absolute emergency without it going through our word processing department. And they go in and, you know, it's another set of eyes. It's just interested from the data itself. They go through and make sure all the formatting has been properly done, that the structure of the report is the way we want it, and it, uh, you know, is in keeping with uh, the style guide for that type of report. Depending on your client, the client may want to review. If, a, if the client happens to be an attorney, yes, they're going to re want to review this before it goes out the door. Um, so you have to be ready and make sure there's time involved for that. And you may actually be writing uh, for a regulator, whether it's a regulator lead site or the regulator is just going to be the end user of the document. Uh, you've got to get it to them and, and maybe they want to have input on it. You have to remember that you're writing for different audiences and readers. Um, sometimes your client is, uh, is very experienced. Sometimes it's the first time they've ever dealt with the word environmental. It could be working for lenders and the regulators, again, attorneys. You may write slightly differently if you're working for a buyer or a seller of a property. So the, data, the data and the facts all stay the same. Sometimes the presentation varies a little. Everybody reads, comprehends things differently. Um, reports need to be multimedia. Uh, you go through with text, maps, figures, photographs, use tables and charts, use everything at your disposal. Um, I'm, I'm assuming since we have moved to a virtual office and everything goes out electronically, it won't be long before we're embedding video in our in our project reports. Makes it hard to copy on the uh, copy machine later on. Um, problems, cut and paste issues are always a problem because you cut something in and it's still got some reference to the other site or um, something that isn't quite right for your project. Spelling and grammar checks. Um, we all know that the grammar checks are not perfect, but but they help a lot. And you can also add, as you hit them, scientific terms, names of chemical compounds that you're going to be running against into the dictionary on your um, your software. When you're using acronyms, define it once in the document, and then use the acronym going forward. I, I continually see people defining it and then putting a parenthetical afterwards and continuing to, to do that. Make sure you're, you're mindful of, of the chronology of, of what happened and, and report it that way. Please be sure to use compass directions, east and north, not left and back. To this day, when I'm reviewing a report, I take the site figure, orient it so I know where north is, and then double check every direction that comes into me. This one's a little more odd, but it has to be paid attention to. You have to remember that certain words have specific meanings under regulation, and you need to use them appropriately and only where they're appropriate. Simple stuff, no excuses. <clears throat> Make sure all the report references are in there. You have internal agreement. If it says this in the text, it has to say the same thing in the table. Don't change terms while you're working in the, in the, in the document. Don't, don't make the same error again and again. That'll not bode well. Make sure you capture your significant uh, issues in both the conclusions. And if you're doing an executive summary, sometimes that's all that gets looked at. Use bullet lists. 
and reference any documentation and reported information, like I said before, uh, you know, who told you that? Make sure that's, that's captured in your reports. Um, some of the other types of writing that you'll get involved with as time goes by, uh, more in the marketing end of things with um, requests for qualifications or proposals, you'll be writing the uh, understanding and the scope of work. You might get involved in, in working on your company's website, social media presence. Obviously, there's a different uh, ethic in writing there. Um, we do, on occasion, have to produce uh, bilingual or multilingual uh, documents for specific neighborhoods that we're working in. Um, and then anything that's going on as a legal notice or a communication to a third party who's not involved, um, there's some special considerations there. I'm, I'm not even going to go into email, so we, we should all know about that, that, you know, basically these aren't the things that you're sending to your friends. Be complete. Again, your emails are discoverable if you're uh, going to court, so don't write anything in there that you wouldn't be willing to state and defend in a courtroom. Uh, we have a process of constant improvement. You can use your managers and staff, peer reading. We've actually occasionally brought in instructors to, to do writing issues um, with our staff. Um, not a bad idea to take a writing class or class feel in your field um, that has significant writing component. I think some of the best things that I took on my master's program were, were for writing were actually uh, business environmental law classes. Um, slightly in the field, slightly out of the field, with a large writing component. Uh, if you are still in school, highly recommend a senior thesis. If you're an undergrad, obviously if you're a grad, you're doing a thesis or a project can't emphasize enough, go to field camp. If you want field skills, you want to look good on your resume, you want to learn how to take field notes and write it up at the end, can't, can't emphasize that enough. And definitely, definitely, if you can at all uh, find a way to do it, do an internship in the field. We take in several interns every year, and most of them we end up hiring because we understand them, they understand us and our business. Uh, and it works out really well. And uh, I'll say thank you and turn it back over to Leela.